Hello everyone, I am the Lore Explorer and this is Outer Wild. In today's loop, I want to talk about an endgame scene and try to apply a theory to it. It's certainly a very symbolic moment and one of the most impactful moments of the game. For those who have beaten it, you'll know the significance of the Ancient Glade. For those who haven't, this video will contain heavy endgame spoilers for Outer Wild, so I advise clicking off the video now as the first sentence once we start is a spoiler. We experience a lot of strange things while at the eye of the universe, but for now, I want to focus on what we know as the Ancient Glade. After going through some crazy stuff to say the least, we find ourselves surrounded in a forest of gigantic trees. Eventually, the giant trees around us all disappear and we are met with an odd signal. Tracking down this signal leads us to ourselves, an exact copy that's even making the exact same movements as us. Trying to interact with it turns this copy of us into a tree. Using the rules of observation, we can flick our light on and off to watch this tree grow younger and younger until eventually it becomes a stack of wood set to be lit as a campfire. Lighting this campfire is when I think this finally becomes the ancient glade. Turning around, we see there are tall trees behind us, but much smaller than the initial trees. And turning again reveals trees now surround us on all sides, but interestingly, these trees stay in the same place. They do not act like quantum trees. And even more interestingly, there is now a chair sitting next to the campfire. But not just any chair, this is Esker's rocking chair. And sure enough, spinning around one more time gives Esker the chance they need to join us. And when we try to talk to them, they simply ask, do you hear music in the trees? Using our signal scope, we can search the ancient glade to track down the music being played by our friend. But oddly, when we reach the signal, we don't find its owner strumming along. Instead, we find their banjo inside of some Nomai runes, and interacting with the instrument causes some strange things to happen. The light flickers around us, and our surroundings change. But this prompts Rebic to show up around the campfire. And once we talk to Rebic, they tell us that we can't start just yet. We're going to have to find all of our friends before we do. And with that, our signal scope picks up an array of signals from the Outer Wild Ventures. And so we set off into the forest to locate them. To track down each of their signals, we have to interact with something in the ancient glade. For Rebic, we have to explore some Nomai ruins. We have to do some stargazing using our signal scope's telescope to find church drums. A nice breadcrumb trail of poem lines leads us to our ever-relaxed Gabbro's hammock. And for Feldspar, we have to brave an anglerfish and reminisce about giant jellyfish. And of course, for Solanum, we have to take a shuttle ride. Once we do all of these things, we find each and every one of the Outer Wilds explorers around the campfire, plus our new Know My Friend. Back at the campfire, we can chat with everyone and tell them that it's time to play the song that just brought us all together. This song spawns a ball of quantum possibilities that make up the next universe, which we can proudly say that we contributed to. After experiencing this for the first time, I had no idea what was going on here. But after some help from the Reddit, I concluded that these were likely projections of my friends conjured up by the eye of the universe and the quantum smoke to help us to complete our goal. Sort of like how the eye showed us the Harthy Museum when we first entered and entangled with the quantum smoke. And there are many good reasons to believe this. First of all, Esker seemed to follow the rules of quantum observation when they arrive, and when others arrive, the lights flickered. Secondly is something odd Gavro says to us. They say, I'm glad I got to be a part of something so important. Well, not me really, but close enough. And something I missed out on the first time I played the game because I was so overwhelmed with this place was that Solanum actually speeds Harthian in this scene, which is a huge indication that this isn't the Solanum we know. Plus, these characters seem to have some knowledge of what's going on here, saying things like, you'll need the others for the next part. So with all of these odd characteristics about our friends around the campfire, it makes sense that they may just be a quantum projection, a product of the eye to help us create another universe. But there is a very slim chance that they are more than that. More recent theories have pointed something out to me. Just because they aren't the characters we know from our solar system doesn't mean they are quantum projections. It's possible that these are versions of our friends from a parallel universe in which they made it to the eye instead of us. Now, of course, there's no way for me to actually prove this, but I have other videos trying to explain the crazy array of phenomenon in the game, and it always comes back to an infinite multiverse. 
So let's quickly go over some of the logic that makes this an actual possibility. If you'd like a more detailed explanation on the topic, check out my Many Worlds interpretation of Outer Wilds. To keep it short, we know the Outer Wilds universe isn't really a universe. It's at the very least a cyclical multiverse with a universe before ours and a universe after ours, and I'm willing to bet that is extended further on. All I'm arguing is that our universe actually has multiple parallel timelines just like these multiple universes. To me, the only way that the time loop, the quantum fluctuations, and a few other endings make sense is if our universe is actually just one universe in an infinite parallel multiverse. What's interesting to me about this is the only difference between a truly infinite multiverse and a quantum possibilities are the scale of them. Just how these quantum possibilities exist in every possible state until observed, in an infinite multiverse, every possible outcome will have happened in a universe of its own, while the universe next to it will have a slightly different outcome. To simplify that in changes that would matter to the ancient glade, in our universe, we are the explorer who made it to the eye, but in another parallel universe, Esker is the Harthian who made it here. The cool thing here is that all of these infinite parallel universes have one thing in common, and that's the eye of the universe exists in all of them. And even though Esker entered the eye from another universe, I think all of these entrances lead to the same place, this strange gray chamber of quantum smoke. I think each pillar in this chamber represents an entrance to or from another universe, and this is what would allow each of the multiverse's explorers to have made it to the same place at the end. As long as it's technically possible for them to have made it to the eye in one of the universes, then it's safe to say that in an infinite multiverse, that possibility would have occurred. Which is sort of backed up by us having to meet Solanum before she arrives at the Ancient Glade. If we never met her, it's not possible for her to make it to the eye of the universe. Even if she somehow left the Quantum Moon, she would still be stuck alone on Brutal Hollow with no help to come. But since we go visit her, the possibility of her getting on our ship and coming with us actually exists. Now again, there isn't really any proof for this, but it's a very real possibility I think is worth considering. One reason I find this possibility so compelling is that the eye exists outside of time and it survives through the universe's ending over and over. If our friends actually made it to the eye of the universe and entangled with it, it's very likely that they will live as a quantum possibility until the end of the eye's existence. Just as I argue, it's likely that we lived until the end of the Eye's existence. Now before you shout lore, we died shortly after we entered the Eye of the Universe, just hear me out. The Eye exists outside of time, and there are several moments in the Ancient Glade where we see time being depicted in weird ways. We watch the tree grow younger and younger after we find our copy, and we watch the Nomai building fall to ruins in a matter of seconds, which we know takes more than 280,000 years from personal experience. And this trend continues and is basically put in writing for us if we go do Solemn's Fate ending. When we get that ending, the screen tells us how long have you been here? Minutes? Years? You can't tell, but you think your journey has come to an end. To us, it felt like maybe 22 minutes there at most, but to the Harthian, time felt strange. And the quantum moon reflects the body it's orbiting. The only way to get this ending is to be around the eye of the universe when it happens. So I'm really only arguing the same thing happens while you're at the eye of the universe. To us as a player, it feels like we're there for 20 minutes tops before we die in the Big Bang, but really, that 20 minutes could have been 100 billion years for all we know. When we walk through the museum and observe the universe, we watch it fade away in seconds. That should have taken like 500 million years to happen if we stayed in our universe. But we watch it all happen just in the blink of an eye. The point is, just because we feel like we experienced a certain amount of time at the eye, it's more likely time may not exist there at all. And since we are entangled with an object that doesn't experience time linearly, or maybe even at all, I suggest that neither do we. We very well could be there until the eye ceases to exist. Though sadly, even if that was the case, we would essentially be trapped like Solomon was on the quantum moon, so being alive forever may not be too useful to us in practice, even if it somehow makes me feel a little bit better. Another reason I want this theory to be true is how meaningful it would be. Let's say these really are a version of our friends from a parallel universe and not just some quantum projection, and let's say time is being experienced strangely here. While exploring this vaguely familiar, yet creepy forest, it may have felt like a thousand years had passed, all alone with only the thoughts of leaving our friends in a dying universe behind. Then, you run into one thing that has always brought you and your friends together, 
a campfire. And even though you may be from different universes and separated by different quantum projections produced by the eye, this campfire somehow connects you and brings you back together with Esker. And of course, the rest of our friends are brought to us by our shared love of exploring and the song that we'd all gather around to listen to. The developers put in all these things that connect us to our friends, and through space and time, through the same wonder and exploration that we tapped into during our journeys, they brought us all together. Now, I think this is all meaningful even if they are only quantum projections, but to me, if these were actual Harthians from some parallel multiverse, then we aren't doing this alone. At the end, in what must be our hardest times, even though time, space, and all of this super sketchy reality is telling us that we are alone, our friends still came to our side to help us. They came to our side when the whole universe abandoned us and we felt helpless, and then they helped us. Now, if they really are parallel versions of our friends, some of the things that they say and do don't make much sense at first. Gabbro straight up tells us that they aren't them anymore, they're close enough, but not them, which would almost explicitly negate this theory. But we aren't exactly us anymore either, are we? We are this being entangled with the eye that no longer is bound by the normal laws of the universe or time. So Gabbro isn't so wrong when they say, well, not me exactly. It also sort of makes sense that Solomon was able to speak Harthian in this scene. If this theory were true, she would have had to made her way here somehow. And if you think about it, the only way it'd be possible for her to make it here is if we rescued her from the quantum moon. And it makes sense if we rescued her that she would have learned our language by the time that we reached the eye. And as a bonus, if this were true, it would also sort of point to the fact that the quantum moon and I could keep someone alive through massive amounts of time through its entanglement phenomenon. Plus, if you think about it, once we entangle with the eye, we could be split into multiple quantum versions of ourselves, just like with the quantum moon. There may be a hundred of us who arrive at the eye of the universe the second that we touch down. This would explain our copy, why the Harthians sort of act quantum, and it'd still leave open the possibility that these are real Harthians from a real universe who got split into quantum possibilities and not just some quantum projection. Now, I'll be honest here, there's a very good chance that I'm wrong in just grasping at straws, but as long as I work out a logical way for it to be possible, I'll keep hoping it's true. Just so you know, I'm not just entirely wishfully thinking and hoping here. This actually does fall into the logic of other theories of mine. Once I came up with to explain entirely different scenarios in the game, such as self, the space-time ending, and just normal quantum behavior. But after watching the ending again, I figured that those theories could be applied to the explorers at the campfire as well, and still be able to make sense. So I'm not entirely confident that this theory is true, but I'm confident that it's a valid possibility that could have occurred in the multiverse we were presented with. And if we are following the laws of quantum observation, I think you all agree that a possibility is all you need to make it certain. A special thank you to the members here on the channel. You've kept my fuel tanks and tummy full while out exploring the universe, and you don't know how good a marshmallow tastes while orbiting a gas giant. Thank you so much for the support. If you enjoy the video, consider liking it and subscribing to the channel. And if you enjoy the channel, consider becoming a member by clicking the join button below. As always, this is the Lore Explorer, still thinking about the ending of Outer Wilds almost two years later. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.